The 1960s was one of the best ever decades for music. So much so that the musical stars at the time, Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Ray Charles, are still making us dance today. But there's one particular star at the time who has been forgotten by history. One who, despite a whopping 47 chart hits in the 60s and 100 million records sold, is barely remembered today. Her name, Brenda Lee. So why did her name almost vanish from history when her counterparts in the same era are still well praised and discussed today? Come with us as we take you on a journey through the little known part of Brenda Lee's life while showing you some of her rare photos. If there's one word that can sum up Brenda Lee's childhood, it's this, poverty. Brenda's family lived in absolute squalor for much of her early life. She was born on December 11th, 1944 to Reuben Lindsay Tarpley and Annie Gracie Yarbrough in Atlanta, Georgia, right out of the womb. Everything she had was shared with her brother and sister, even her bed. Her father, Reuben Lindsay Tarpley, had a great talent for baseball, so much so that in his army days, he entertained many of his comrades with his feats using a baseball bat. However, when the war ended, he found it remarkably difficult to put this talent to good use. Being the son of a farmer, the only way he could provide for his family was by doing odd jobs wherever he could find them. Because of this, the Tarpley family moved around a lot. Brenda went from school to school as a child, hardly having the chance to make strong friendships. Comfort was virtually a foreign concept to her, as running water was too much of a luxury for them to have. However, they did own a battery-powered table radio, and this was what fostered Brenda's love for music. Things were so bad for Brenda's family that even as a toddler, she had to chip in financially. She and her siblings would go to the store with nothing in their pockets, hoping that her singing would win them a couple of pennies with which to buy candy. To her siblings' delight, their plan always worked more than they expected. Turns out that even at such a young age, Brenda's voice was already incredibly powerful. Brenda did not always sing for work though. Sometimes she sang for pleasure, especially at her local Baptist church where her uncle was the pastor. And it's a good thing she did too, because that was where people first began to notice that she had real talent, talent that could really shake things up. She was edged on to participate in talent competitions around the state. The members of her church felt that the whole world should hear her voice. Delighted, Brenda began to put herself out there. No talent competition was too insignificant for her. This time, the fruits of her labor were more than just pennies. She began to bring in real money that her family could rely on, and it seemed at last that the Tarpley family had gotten their big break. Though Brenda was only a child, things could not be more perfect for her at the time. Her father may have failed to fulfill his potential as a baseball player, but at least he would get to see her fulfill hers as a singer. Or will he? Unfortunately, not everything went as planned. Right as her star was rising, her father died in a construction site accident. In a heartbreaking twist of fate, he would not live to see her chase her dreams after all. The death of Reuben Tarpley was not just emotionally devastating, but financially devastating as well. As he was the breadwinner of the family, the loss of his income meant that Brenda and her siblings were very close to becoming homeless. That's exactly what would have happened had Brenda not stepped up to provide for her family. At the tender age of 10, she replaced her father as the breadwinner of her family. This new responsibility meant that Brenda had to take her duties as a singer way more seriously. Rather than only relying on her powerful voice, she knew she would not make it as a star if she did not develop her look and her stage presence even further. These efforts paid off as Brenda won bigger and better singing contests, ones that earned her appearances on TV and radio and a far wider exposure. In fact, throughout her many appearances on the country music show TV Ranch, she had to stand on a wooden crate to reach the microphone. In 1955, two years after her father's death, Brenda's mother remarried. Her new husband had no interest in staying in Atlanta, so the family relocated to Cincinnati, Ohio. This was an anxious period in Brenda's life, as most of her music connections were in Georgia. However, in a stroke of good fortune, Brenda met country star Jimmy Skinner, who helped keep her music career afloat. He performed with her twice on a Kentucky radio show, helping her hone her craft. Brenda and her mother did not fit in well in Ohio. Because of this, they moved back to Atlanta after a short time. There, Brenda kept working hard at her singing, believing that a big break was on its way. Well, it came, but it came at a ridiculously high cost for her at the time. 
At 10 years old, Brenda had a choice before her. She could either earn a $30 payday, equivalent to $336 today, with which to support her family, or she could meet Red Foley, one of the greatest country music stars at the time. Of course, Brenda's family was not clear of financial trouble yet, but then she decided she just had to meet Red Foley, who was one of her musical heroes. This single decision to turn down such a relatively large amount of money so as to meet her idol is what made Brenda Lee a star. Even at such a tender age, she was already focused on the bigger picture. What happened was that Foley, intrigued by her, told her to perform the hit song Jambalaya on stage, unrehearsed. During the live recording of the ABC TV program Ozark Jubilee, Lee rose to the occasion so well that Foley's jaw dropped. At his own admission, in 26 years of recording and touring, he had not seen any performance like hers. She wowed him not just with her voice, but with her attitude as well. Lee's performance on Ozark Jubilee truly skyrocketed her to stardom. All of a sudden, so many big shot producers and talent managers wanted to sign her. Everything she had ever dreamed of, the albums, the tours, the brand deals, was right there within reach. However, as fate would have it, there was one major problem. In Brenda's bid to get her family out of poverty as quickly as possible, her mother signed her onto a contract with Ozark Jubilee without reading the fine print. This meant that Brenda was not allowed to sign a far more lucrative contract with any of those big shot producers. Not until her five-year contract with Ozark Jubilee was fulfilled. This was such a frustrating position for Brenda. Everything she had ever wanted was right in front of her, but she just was not free to pursue it. If it was up to ABC TV and Ozark Jubilee, Brenda would have had no choice but to fulfill her contract. It would have been five years of performing on a small stage while knowing that she deserved to perform on the biggest stages in the world. However, this contract jail was something she was able to avoid. What happened was that her mother used what little money the family had in an attempt to get her out of the contract. By 1957, a lawsuit facilitated by Brenda's then manager, Dub Albritton helped her break out of her contract with Ozark Jubilee. In her words, he guided her and cared for her just like he was her father. She was finally free to sign her first major record deal and British label Decca Records was the lucky one to land her signature. For the Tarpley family, the hard times were truly finally over. Now, with Brenda at the wheel, the sky was the limit. Within a few months of recording in the booth, Brenda Lee had already begun to make hits. Her songs Dynamite and One Step at a Time became hits in both the pop and the country music circuits. Any other label would have celebrated this as a major success, but the folks at Decca Records were thinking a step ahead of that. Sure, Brenda earned most of her popularity by performing as a country and as a gospel singer. However, her management felt that if she wanted to reach her full potential, she would have to hover away from those genres and more towards pop music. With the 60s rushing forward at full speed, the music landscape was changing. Country music was in decline, and if Brenda did not adapt, she risked getting swept away with the tide. Though it was a painful decision, Brenda accepted this advice from her management. Turns out they were 100% right because her biggest hits came in the pop circuit. Throughout the 50s and the 60s, Brenda enjoyed an explosive level of success. Up until the rise of Madonna, she was the only female solo artist who managed to score nine consecutive top 10 hits on the Billboard 100 between 1960 and 1962. She earned a total of 47 chart hits that entire decade, putting her on the same level of success as such names as Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Ray Charles. In fact, she was the first woman to be inducted into both the country music and rock and roll halls of fame. Brenda's biggest hit, as it turns out, is a Christmas song titled Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, a song she recorded when she was only 14 years old. It is one of a handful of songs from her that modern mainstream audiences stand a chance of identifying. This begs the question, how did one of the biggest stars of the 50s and 60s manage to fade into such obscurity? The answers to that question are complex. However, they can be summarized as such. As Brenda grew up, it was difficult for her to maintain a musical identity. With the decline of rock and roll, she did not want to hop onto the hot new thing. Instead, she returned to her roots. She reestablished herself as a gospel and country artist, which largely diminished her cultural impact. 
Since most of her biggest fans only knew her as a pop and rock and roll artist, her output in the 70s failed to live up to her work the two decades prior. Though her return to country music was artistically fulfilling to her, it was not as commercially or critically fulfilling as it had been the years prior. Sure, she would continue to support herself with music, but her name would no longer be mentioned among the biggest musical stars in the world. As she started her career at such a young age, Brenda Lee is still alive today. At 78 years old, she is still going strong. Every now and then, her Christmas hit rocking around the Christmas tree charts on the Billboard 100. This ensures that she still has a small measure of relevance today. Having been the recipient of a Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award in 2009, these days, she is content to share her rags to riches story with anyone willing to listen. She sometimes makes guest appearances on modern country songs. However, she mostly spends her time enjoying the numerous luxuries that she was denied as a child. For Brenda Lee, the moon was the limit, so she went to the moon. Though she came back down to earth in the end, she will forever be Little Miss Dynamite. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.